we stood next to the command variant of the Boxer uh, mechanised infantry vehicle. One of the key features of this vehicle is that we have what we call a common drive module. And everything that you see here, forward of this line, and all the way down below this rubber line where the tracks are, something called the drive module, and it's common to all 628 vehicles. It's exactly the same. What we see above here, anything behind this line and above this line, all the way back, is what they call the mission module. Some of you may remember a television series called The Thunderbirds, and effectively what that was, was the ability to put in different capabilities on the back of the same uh, carrying vehicle. So what we have is a drive module that carries a mission load and inside that box there, and um, we'll see shortly uh, in a few minutes what goes inside that box, you get different types of soldiers with different types of equipment doing different types of mission things. I'm just going to talk a little bit more about the drive module itself. Inside here on the far side we have um, a large what we call a power pack and effectively it's an engine with a gearbox and it has an alternator, a lot of power in this vehicle, a phenomenal amount of power because it's a heavy vehicle, it's about 38 tonnes and we need to be able to move troops quickly at long distances and also across uh, cross country effectively and quickly without uh, finding that they get stuck, bogged or they can't climb up certain hills so they need to be able to move quickly uh, and effectively. The driver's cab is just in this location up here behind the glass and the driver literally sits in this position here. He's incredibly well protected. The driver can open up or he can be closed down for tactical uh, scenarios. You may have noticed up there we have this what looks like a unicorn. It's actually a wire cutting device so that if there are any wires or any threats, particularly in the urban environment, this will cut through to protect anyone uh, in the vehicle behind. That's the effectiveness of that. At the very front, uh, you'll see here we have eight wheels. This is an eight-wheeled vehicle. Um, each of these wheel stations can take up to five tonnes. And we have what we call a central tyre inflation system. Um, so there is air pressure that can deflate the wheels, inflate the tyres, depending on the terrain, um, to get the best possible cross-country performance. And inside the wheels, there's also what we call run flats, so that if there is any damage to the tyres, they are punctured, you can still keep driving this vehicle um, to your mission end. If you look up at the very top of the vehicle, um, and you can just see right up here what looks to be a couple of eyes, this is what they call the remote weapon station and every single boxer will have um, this uh, station and what it does it's a little platform that can rotate uh, gives 360 degrees rotation and it houses a weapon system uh, a machine gun it can house smoke grenades and it also houses cameras so that we can see at range either with a day camera or a thermal camera and again that's just to enable us to identify uh, any enemy uh, any casualties and it's for our own survivability. What we'll now do is we'll just take a look in the back of the vehicle. Um, I will point out two further features. You'll see this little block here, actually this houses cameras and it's called a local situational awareness system and effectively we have cameras that go all the way around the vehicle. So in a lot of modern cars you have a rear parking sensor um, but what we've got here is more than that, we've got a rear parking sensor but also something that can look down the sides of the vehicle, it can look to the front of the vehicle and the idea is here that everyone can be fully what we call closed down inside the vehicle, all of the hatches are closed and everyone's inside this metal box but they can see everything that they need to outside and that's for safety reasons and so that the driver knows where to go and actually before the people in the back climb out they know exactly what they're climbing out into particularly if they're in a town or a city where there are lots of other people they want to be able to see what they're climbing out into and this camera here can see uh, 24 7 in all weather and conditions and finally we have uh, an extra stowage load at the back here uh, what we call the the rear rack and again this is additional uh, stowage space for equipment so that we've got sufficient um, equipment carried for uh, the number of days that we need to keep the troops on board for. Um, so this vehicle is self-sustaining for a number of days in order that we can conduct our, our missions. Um, it 
has a uh, step uh, climb of 0.75 metres and it also has a gap crossing of at least 1.75 and in our trials recently we've actually made this vehicle go uh, above and beyond both of those uh, basic requirements and those basic requirements are what you'd expect for uh, what we call uh, high mobility vehicles of which this vehicle is considered to be one so it's a really good benchmark um, we've got the four variants um, command specialist infantry carrying ambulance of which we carry different loads of uh, troops in the back. We can have up to an, a maximum of 11 soldiers. You will always have a driver, a commander, an operator, and then up to eight um, soldiers in the back, depending on its, its mission role. Uh, it has what we call a 600 kilowatt engine, so roughly that equates to about 800 brake horsepower. So a super fast, super powerful engine. Um, it has a wading depth of at least one meter, although recently we did take it down to some sea trials and we actually made it go a little bit deeper. Um, so it's got a good wading depth and can comfortably go onto landing craft. Um, so a lot of really good capabilities about that vehicle. This will be a step change in capability. This is the first time that we're going to get a really highly capable platform. And think of a platform that could effectively deploy from its home base in Tidworth, it could drive through the Channel Tunnel, and it could self-deploy to somewhere in Europe within days. This is a vehicle for the first time that can self-support itself for up to 2,000 kilometers in, in, in a few days' time. Uh, I think the way the box vehicle would enhance the unit, the main aspect being that we can just take it where we need to go. So at the moment with the Warrior, we've got to get it headed on vehicles and then organise a lot of logistics for it. Whereas with the Boxer, we'll be able to pack up, load up, and we can drive it on the road straight over if need be to Estonia or anywhere in Europe that we need it. We can just get up and go, which will make it a lot more effective and easier. The speed of it is unbelievable. Um, seeing it around the track here at Millbrook, just going around at 60 miles an hour is just unbelievable. The big factor of it is it's all modular, um, so the back of the vehicle literally just lifts off and then mission specific to what you want, you can just crane it on um, and they reckon about half an hour to an hour, so the speed and the adaptability is unbelievable.